So we're going to show you everything you need to know about CV axles. Show you a super cool trick on getting them to go in and click. I'm going to show you the do's and don'ts of installation and removals. I'm also going to show you how to do this torque down procedure with one man. Some of these tricks you're going to know, some of them you aren't. So stay tuned to the show to possibly learn something that you don't already know. But if you know everything, you can comment down below and tell us how awesome you are because you already know. Well, I'm going to remove this axle here that's obviously something happened to it, which you're going to see in the show and what mistakes I made and what I did wrong and why it won't go in and everything else. The trick that I'm going to show you to get this axle to click in is bar none, one of my best tricks ever, and it's something I just thought of. So stay tuned. Right now, we're going to show you how to remove the axle end tip properly. The first time I've ever filled a full-length feature video in this format. Tell me if you like it better than the other horizontal videos that other people make. Get my axle out the rest of the way. I need to remove this lock nut. You have a badass ooga booga? Removal is righty tighty, lefty loosey, not like this guy. Turn it on the right direction. I don't have to do anything. In my situation, I'm actually replacing the nut, so I wasn't worried about breaking it. You're not replacing the axle like me. Make sure you bend them up, or you're going to need a new nut. If you're not replacing the axle like me, put the nut on, screw it down six or seven, eight threads then hit it with a hammer if it's stuck in place. That will avoid bending over the threads. If that doesn't work, spray some penetrant in here. Try to get it to the rear of your axle. More than likely, it's gonna be separated like this because generally you can't remove an axle without having it disassembled from the strut. Take a pick pit, hit it in the center. You don't need the nut on there if you're using air tools, but if you're using a hammer, you definitely need it. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove mine. Make sure while you're driving that axle out, it's not going to bottom out against anything. Axle insulation procedure and tips. This one tip right here is going to save you hours of messing around. At the end of every axle that has a male piece like this that goes into your transaxle transmission, there's going to be a hog ring on there. You need to inspect that hog ring and make sure it is springy. It's in there correctly. If not you're gonna be like Clayboy, making videos and messing everything up. So wanna visually inspect these grooves right here and make sure there's not any tangs that are holding it back from inserting inside there like these are bent over. You can use a square file such as this to clean them up. Keeping in mind that if anyone else can do it, you can do it too. I know this seems complicated, but it will become simple to you on these German cars to have a ring right down there at the end. You can't hit that because you'll knock that thing off. Some people even think it's a good idea to hit it right here because they know that this is the cup. I knew better than to do it, but I did it anyways. And greasing the tip of my shaft, which would have told me that the hog ring was no good and I wouldn't even have wasted my time. We're going to get to what you can do to get this to clip in there, but let me show you how it's supposed to work. The first thing you want to do is make sure the tip of your shaft is always greased so it slides right in. All right, the way that this is supposed to work is you should be able to grab this and you want to have it still inserted inside there so you can move it up and down, but you should be able to slap it and kick it in there just like that. And then you want to pay particular attention to the back edge of where it meets up with the engine and transmission to make sure it's inserted in there. And I highly recommend you always give it a little wiggle and see if it'll come back out because if you don't, it's not clicked in. What happens if you were to drive this without it clicked in? Eventually, it's gonna hog out the inside of your transmission and destroy the bearings inside there. I actually bought a car where somebody had done this. I did not know it, I just thought it needed a new axle. And yeah, I ended up replacing the transmission in that car. So anytime you're inserting a CV axle into a transmission, you should not be able to get your fingers in here. Now on this BMW, they have this ring around here, but I can tell that if it was concaved correctly, I would not be able to get my fingers in there. So that's definitely not in there correctly. 
see how much of a gap there is. There's nothing pressed up against there. And most axles don't have this counterweight on the end of them like these BMWs do. We've got to get that in there the rest of the way. This axle will move in and out of that shaft and you can use it as a hammer to get it locked in there. And then you can take your hand and run it across the top to make sure it's all the way down. In this situation, it's not because we can take it and just jiggle it out. But if you take both arms, like I'm doing right here, holding up one end and pushing the other end in as you push force with both arms, making sure that your axle is bottomed out inside the cup, you'll have a lot more success. And I cannot get that to lock in for nothing. If this trick that I'm about to show you does not work, you've got an internal problem inside your transmission and it's never gonna work. But if you've checked everything that I've showed you so far, 100% guarantee this will work every time. This is what's going on inside your axle housing. You have these bearings and they're sliding up and down inside this cup right here. So when you're putting it in there by hand, it's making this sliding motion and hammer motion. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna get you some 10 CRs. These are seven CRs, they stand for crimp. These flatter styles won't grab the axle as well as the crimp styles will. Now you wanna take a sawzall cutoff wheel and we're gonna make some grind marks in this. You could even use sandpaper. You wanna rough it up where you're gonna put their vice grips because you don't want this hose clamp going down. But if you're like me, and you end up sliding it down, you can cut this end off of here, and then at your local parts store, they'll have that, or there'll be a link to the description down below for these clamps. All of important things that you need to keep in mind when you're doing this trick right here. Actually using genuine vice grips, Chinese vice grips don't work for shit. Also, you need to get these vice grips as tight on the axle as possible. You wanna make sure that the axle bearings are pressed into the cup and bottomed out at the cup. Can't get it as tight as possible, there's an Allen wrench on the end of these screws for you sissy bitches. Obviously, I'm a sissy bitch, and I didn't grab the Allen wrench, but I grabbed a Bam Bam. He's the producer. Bam, Come over. Bam. I'm a sissy bitch too, apparently. Well, you need to use two hands. You're young and virile and vi virile mans. Young virile mans. Let me get up out of your way so you can do this. Now that I had one of them young virile men come and tighten these vice grips down for me with my old hands. First off, you're going to notice that my vice grips will slip down as I hammer it. That's because I didn't put any grooves in it, I didn't sand it, or anything like that. I wasn't totally sure if this was going to work, but it most certainly does because I needed to lift up on the axle like that to get it to lock into place. And as soon as I did that, and it locked right in. Axle is inserted. Okay, so now I got to figure out how to get this piece out of here and get it moved back here, but... Even if I had to cut that, that still gets my axle all the way up there, secure inside my housing. So the trick worked good. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That was the first time I ever did that. That was freaking awesome. I've had trouble with that a couple times over the years. Most of the time I don't, but for whatever reason, this time I did. So now we're gonna show you how to remove an axle, getting it released from the transmission, or at least the best way that I know how to do it, and the tricks and tips that I've learned over the years doing it. I'll guarantee you this helped you out of a pickle, so do me a favor. Consider donating to the channel. I'd greatly appreciate it. My dog ate my false teeth and I could use some new ones. Or while you're sleeping at night, turn the volume down, put on one of my sweet tips and tricks playlist, let the videos play. I greatly appreciate you. Keep in mind, the whole time you're ever working on a vehicle, if anybody else can do it, you can do it too. And if you've got to pay somebody else to do it for you, that's how much you would be paying yourself to do it. So is your time worth a hundred or $200 an hour? Because that's normally what it costs. If this video is helpful, please consider subscribing, clicking the notification, sharing my video. Give me them sweet old thumbs up. If you've got a question for me, you can hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger. I answer everybody's questions for absolutely free. Although I can't help you with your baby mama drama. So... Please keep that to yourself. Don't be the next to them. Be the first to you. Let's get on with the video. Now, it's really important to remember that if you're ever going to remove an axle, that you have everything loose on the outside of the axle so the axle's able to travel. You even technically want your axle pushed out and protruded all the way through your wheel hub. 
because you probably won't be able to get this axle out because you don't have any room to move. Now we're going to get up underneath the vehicle because of people like you saying, oh, that's easy to do with the lift. I sold my lift, but I still have $150,000 worth of other equipment with the exception of a freaking $2,500 lift. So thank you for that. Okay, so the axle hog ring down in there is supposed to be a spring. And just like a spring, you're gonna need to push pressure on it and sharply spring it out of place. Anytime you're removing an axle, you wanna get your pry bar in between here and here, or between here and here. Bar right here and sharply kick it out of there. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to demonstrate this with one hand. There's a pry bar in the hammer to knock the axle out as well. Our pry bar up there against that, then back here, and I probably won't be able to get enough swing, but, because I'm not in the right location. But you can get some nice hits right here, and that thing will pop right out. It, it's, there's no doubt about it that either working it sharply like that which you got to be careful with because you could break the housing on your transmission or using the hammer will pop that out you could even use an air hammer now with your axle and everything all reinstalled make sure your dust cover didn't get bent while you were doing all this work we can leave our nut loose and i'm gonna show you the trick about tightening this wheel bearing nut up we're gonna knock the center cap out of this wheel Boop. These holes are in there for specific reasons, but one of the reasons that I use is I torque the axle nut down when it's sitting on the ground. So the geometry of the axle is square with the suspension, allowing it to pull straight and evenly torque the nut down to the bearing so you don't have problems in the future. When you don't use the torque specification from the manufacturer to torque down them bearings, you actually may crush the bearings together because there's two of them inside there. And then that friction generates heat, and then that causes that wheel bearing to not last as long. So it's always important to torque them things down. And not just go gorilla crazy on that ass! Cause it definitely won't last. Hey, if you dug this video, please consider donating down below sharing the video at nighttime, turning the volume down, letting my videos play from front to back. I greatly appreciate it. And no matter what you're working on, no matter what you think, if anyone else can do it, who can do it too. Don't be the next to them. Be the absolute first to you. God bless. Have the best of days.